This is part three in a series of videos in which I'm trying to improve the performance of this T962A reflow oven. In the previous two videos I've stripped the unit down, I've shown the results that I was getting using um, a instrumentation card, so this is um, basically just a, uh, a bare PCB with some thermocouples attached. The reason I chose these uh, locations for the sensors incidentally is because I actually make quite a few of these cards in this oven and these locations are the ones where I was seeing the greatest disparity in readings or performance on the uh, actual reflow. So I was getting very good reflow in the centers um, but fairly poor reflow in the corners and variability in the other locations. So these, this is why these sensors are in these particular locations. Um, the results I got in the um, first few videos demonstrate that the issue really is with the physical design of the chamber in that the uh, heat is provided by four infrared lamps um, but they are providing a very uneven heating of the board that's sitting in the tray. Um, so what I did is to find uh, a, a solution, at least a partial solution to resolving that problem using some thermal baffles. I'm still trying to uh, figure out the final design of the thermal baffles, um, but the next step was to make some small mod modifications to the chamber. I wasn't particularly happy with the finish of the chamber and there were certain aspects that could potentially cause problems. I don't think you necessarily need to make these changes if you are going to modify your unit. Um, but I had the unit stripped right down, so I decided to make these changes anyway. Uh, the first one was to fit some uh, corner pieces. There were some big holes um, where this side channel ended, and that goes into the chamber. So uh, it was taped over, but um, I've fitted some a stainless steel a sheet, bent it to shape, and spot welded it in place. I've done that in a few other locations as well, where there were some unfinished parts of the chamber and there were just holes um, that needed uh, something over them and rather than just use tape uh, I thought I'd uh, put in place a more permanent solution. Another modification I've made that will affect performance is I've fitted a baffle plate so what I was finding is when the uh, cycle got to the cooling phase there's a huge fan sits on the back of this and it was blasting cold air directly across the board that was sitting here uh, and of course that gave very uneven cooling but more importantly the cooling was excessive so what tended to happen is the fan would switch on and then after uh, two or three seconds it would switch off and the heaters would come back on and because again of the uneven, uneven heating I was getting very uh, weird um, profiles in the cooling phase and it wasn't cooling down evenly in the way it should do. So I put a baffle here that will slow the air down but it will also tend to mix it around the sides and blow it down below the uh, tray. There is a secondary tray that sits underneath this one and that should cause air to mix and come back up through the vents and uh, hopefully I get a, a lot of mixing as well as blowing air through the chamber. It will also slow down the air going through the chamber so the controller will have far more authority over the cooling. It will probably run the fan for longer which is what I'm hoping it will do uh, but it will have more control over the um, the, the heat, the cooling phase of the cycle. The other thing I did was on my particular unit there was a very unsightly piece of insulation that ran across the top of the drawer. There's a big hole between the actual chamber and where the drawer sits. Uh, so what I've done is put a, a lip in here, it's a return that's uh, screwed to the uh, back of the door. There are three screws on the back of the door that hold the front part of the door to the actual drawer itself. Uh, and what I've done is reused those screws, made this piece up. I've used um, a matching uh, paint so it looks like it's the original part and it's a tight fit in the chamber so what it does is it presses on the underside of this lip and so when you close the drawer uh, it gives a very good seal and obviously that means there's no longer a gap between uh, the bottom of this return and the front of the drawer. There's about a quarter of an inch gap which is obviously going to have quite a big bearing on the performance of the uh, the unit and now when you push it in there's no gap at all. These two actually slide past each other and it's quite a nice sliding fit. A few other very minor changes, just the same sort of thing to smarten up and uh, seal off any holes and that means I won't get any issues with air leaking out where it shouldn't do. 
and um, that should further help to improve the performance and stabilize the results that I'm getting. Okay, the next thing I'm going to be doing is refitting the heaters and making some baffles more to their final sizes. I've kind of figured out what size they need to be. I'll do a few more runs and probably tailor them to uh, get the best results I can. Uh, as it turns out, they need to be slightly wider in the center of the two center heaters than at the ends. It's probably to be expected. It was uh, getting very hot in the middle of the machine. So what I can do is to widen the baffles in the center and that will uh, cause the center portion of the machine to run slightly cooler than it is now. At the moment it's running quite cold at the sides and hot in the middle and obviously the idea here is to try and even all this out. These baffles give me a lot of control over the system. Uh, what you'll notice if you do look at the baffles is that they are narrower than the heaters and that is intentional. I don't want to cause uh, a blind spot or a complete shadow on the board. Uh, what I'm trying to do is cut down the amount of energy from each particular heater that shines directly down onto the board. Uh, but by leaving the baffle narrower than the heater, it's still allowing some heat to get down to the, um, the portion directly beneath the particular heater. It's just shining in from both sides in effect from the sides of the heater. Uh, and the idea is to try and even out the temperature. It seems to be working very well. I'm down now to about six or seven degrees. Uh, so I'll get this uh, reassembled, get the, the top on, get some baffles on with some proper clips. Uh, and then I'll do a few more runs and uh, we'll have a look at the results seeing if we're making any improvement at all. Okay, I've completed quite a number of test runs now and the results are looking quite promising. I've obviously modified the chamber a little bit um, but mostly it's just thermal baffles that I've been fitting for the initial testing. And the results are promising. This is what I had to start with. This is the machine completely unmodified. These are all the same run, the same profile, the same board and the initial run showed a uh, temperature differential at peak temperature of uh, 40 degrees centigrade and the difference in the time between certain parts of the board when it reached peak temperatures was almost 60 seconds uh, and that does make it very difficult to set up the machine to reflow properly um, in fact, the peak temperature of this profile is meant to be uh, 227 degrees and certain parts of the board weren't going over uh, 200 degrees, uh, which meant that it wasn't getting hot enough to uh, reflow the solder. And other areas, by the time it did get hot enough, um, the flux is activated somewhere down here, but by the time it got hot enough to reflow, the flux would have dried out and so wouldn't have flowed anyway. Fitting thermal baffles made a, a quite a big difference and quite a marked improvement. So you can see that uh, we're now getting a much tighter um, spread of temperatures. It's now down to only about 20 degrees centigrade, maybe a little less. And uh, more importantly, the uh, peak times are all being reached at the same time. So this gives a much more uh, consistent temperature across the board and it also gives far more likelihood that if you get the profile set up correctly then all the areas of the board would reach peak temperatures at the same time. However you can see this is the same profile and it should be going up to 200, uh, nearly, nearly 230 degrees centigrade and you can see it's well below that it's not going above uh, 215 so it's way too low. And I've done, as I say, quite a number of tests and they are very consistent. So this was exactly the same run. The only difference between these two is one was a hot start uh, and one was a cold start. So hot start meaning um, this was immediately after a previous run. Uh, but you can see even so the, the, uh, the runs are very consistent. The peak temperatures are very similar. Um, but uh, So this would actually make the machine usable. But uh, as ever, I wasn't really quite satisfied with this. I did quite a lot of uh, experimenting and putting the insulation back on does improve this further, um, but only by about two or three degrees in terms of the spread. Um, it does appear that the two sensors on the unit are 
are being used in such a way that the unit takes an average of the two and it uses that to determine when it's reached the temperature so you can actually modify the machine quite easily to to make it respond more accurately to the profile uh, but unfortunately wherever you put the sensors uh, you still get this spread of temperatures uh, a number of reasons for that um, compared to a commercial machine um, big industrial commercial machines have a conveyor where the zones uh, for each part of the conveyor are fixed they're, they're stabilized ahead of time and then the board is just run along the conveyor and goes through each of the zones uh, they're also heated top and bottom not just from the top now of course the advantage with that is it means that if you do have um, heating elements across the board then the board passes across each uh, heating element so all the parts of the board are subject to generally speaking the same amount of energy uh, and so the profile is more consistent I do have an idea for doing something similar on this I can't of course fit a conveyor but there is a way of simulating a conveyor uh, on this which I'll be looking at in the future what I'm intending to do is explore lots of different ways of modifying these machines and seeing if it's possible to make this machine behave in a much more stable uh, manner make it much easier to set up and it would then be up to the individual owner to decide how far they want to take the modifications but I thought I'd go through all this experimentation just to save anyone a lot of time that might want to do something similar so it's looking quite good this um, initial baffle idea does seem to work I'll be um, finalizing the size of the baffles and uh, where they should be fitted so if anyone wants to try it they can I'll do that in a future video um, but in the meantime as I say I wanted to improve this so the next step was to try recirculating the hot air this is different from turning the cooling fan on and off that does cause um, more instability across the chamber because it's obviously blowing cold air in from one end of the chamber the baffles are fitted inside the chamber do reduce that effect but even so it's better to recirculate the hot air so what I've done as you can probably see is I've fitted a fan so the way this works I'll take the top off in a minute so you can see what's inside but um, uh, basically it's just a very simple fan the fan draws air upwards so it's not it's not blowing down onto the board it's uh, drawing the air up and it tends to make it circulate around the chamber uh, and that of course will give um, uh, much more uh, even temperatures across the chamber I've put it in the center so if you're familiar with these machines you know that there was a probe here so I've taken that out I relocated that these two being where they were uh, it wasn't ideal so I've moved one of the probes um, I've been experimenting with at other locations and what I've ended up with now with the fan and with the probe relocated is this profile so you can see uh, again it's a, a vast improvement over the baffle only and a huge improvement over the uh, original machine uh, and in fact we're only getting about a six degree centigrade spread of temperatures now but also note that unlike the baffle only uh, profile this is the same profile on the machine I haven't changed the settings uh, rather than just peaking at about 215 this is peaking at 227 degrees so it's it's within one or two degrees of the actual profile temperature and one other thing if you've ever watched these machines running you'll know that although there's a profile shown that the machine's trying to follow on its display uh, then the temperatures tend to vary up and down all over the place uh, whereas with the fan fitted then it follows almost exactly the profile that it's trying to achieve uh, also note that in the critical heating phase which is this part here so it's activated the flux down here now it's just trying to get the board hot notice how tight the control of this is it's, it's within a degree or two as it's heating and the peak temperatures are all reached across the board within two seconds of each other so this is a very promising step forward uh, even compared to the baffle only idea it vastly improves things this doesn't this run was without the baffles fitted so of course the next step will be to try uh, a fan and the baffles at the same time and see if an arrangement can be found that uh, improves this still further I think there's still room for improvement as I said the conveyor idea 
um, to move the ball back and forth during the run should improve things even further. Uh, but I'll try the baffles first. I want to offer as many uh, simple alternatives as possible. Um, but I'll show you inside the machine now to uh, show how this fan's arranged. Uh, this sensor is just an additional one. I've been monitoring the temperature of the motor just to make sure it's not uh, getting too hot. Uh, that's not actually used by the machine. Um, as I say, it's just to make sure I'm not uh, overheating the motor. It is thermally isolated to a certain degree, but I can't take it too far because I can't uh, you know, have limited uh, headroom. Uh, but there is still a bit more room. I can lift this still further. Um, but the, the shaft on this motor is too short, so I'll be making up a, a shaft extension and trying to lift it further. Okay, so I'll just pop the top off the machine. We'll have a look inside and you'll see it's a very simple fan arrangement uh, but does make a huge difference. Okay, so as you can see, very simple, just a um, homemade blade fan. Uh, I haven't spent any time or effort in making this as you can see. I've been trying lots of different sizes and shapes and profiles to see uh, what works the best. Uh, when I find the right size and shape then obviously I'll make a, a much neater one. Um, but it doesn't spin very fast. The idea is that this just uh, rotates quite slowly. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be clear on the camera due to the camera shutter speed. Um, but it's not causing a huge amount of, um, of air movement. And the idea is it does draw the air up towards the uh, top of the machine and then it spreads out. Uh, I'm also going to be trying a, a baffle plate underneath this. So. Um, the way that will work is it's a, a perforated plate, so a stainless steel plate with uh, thousands of small holes in it and the idea there is it will further uh, diffuse the air that's being blown around and should even things out even more. As you can see these are all fairly straightforward modifications and um, the idea as I said is to try and make the modifications as simple as possible and it's looking like it's going to be possible to get very good performance out of this machine without going to the effort of uh, creating a new um, controller. Uh, but we'll see how it goes as things develop. Uh, the main thing is to try and find uh, a method that has most effect. And so far, um, putting a uh, recirculation fan in here has uh, made by far the biggest improvement. Um, but I will keep posting updates to see uh, what improves things and what makes things worse. Um, any ideas or comments are welcome.